Uh, this is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk about two different distributions, the triangular distribution and the PERT distribution. Oftentimes, subject matter experts will give you a minimum, a most likely and a maximum, and either a triangular or PERT distribution is utilized in the analysis. This might be in a cost and schedule risk analysis, for example. Now, looking at the internet, a lot of people have suggested that they're moving towards the PERT diagram. So I wanted to compare the triangular and the PERT. So what I've done is uh, shown a distribution based on a minimum of 0, a maximum of 100, and a most likely of 10. And I've used those same numbers for both the triangular and the PERT, as shown here. And they're using the exact same random number, so I'm getting the exact same sequence, in fact, which allows me to take the difference between two, the two results um, for each simulation. And I've run this for 10,000 simulations. And I'm showing the results here in a cumulative distribution chart. So in this particular setup, the 0, 10, and 100, the PERT distribution is giving me a distribution that looks like this, and the triangular here. They both have an expected value, as shown by the squares, slightly above P50, but you can see that the PERT distribution has a much lower expected value. The expected value, in fact, is 23.1 versus 36.5, remembering that the most, the most likely was 10. So in both cases, it's more than twice the most likely. But this is a very skewed distribution. I could also look at it as a, uh, a histogram. Or I could, this is the triangular. And then over here, I'm looking at the, uh, uh, an estimate of a, a continuous. And down here is the histogram of the PERT and the continuous of the distribution. I also looked at Wikipedia, and I picked the, 0, 10, 100 because they had a had those shown and we match these distributions by the way. Now the other thing I wanted to show you was the the difference between the two and it shows that difference can range from almost 0 up to a total of 25 depending upon where you are in the distribution. And I guess another observation is that the mean um, of the PERT distribution, you know, it's just slightly off the mode. I guess this is slightly off the mode, but the mode here in this triangular is actually higher, but this may be because of the estimation methodology. So, um, if on the other hand, so now, <clears throat> look at these lines. I'm going to change this 10 to a 70. And when I do that, the curves change. Everything's updated automatically with the SIPMath model. And we find that the PERT diagram now has a higher expected value than the triangular. And down here, that difference curve, although looking very strange, is now negative, where before it was positive. And now let me make it a symmetrical distribution and put in a 50. And what we find is they're almost identical. And the difference between the two looks like this. Can I explain that? Not really. Uh, other than that the mode is the, mo is the mode is the mean, and there's, there's a period in there where they're about the same, and then they start to deviate on the tails. That's the best explanation I can give for that. So, the question might be, which of these is the best distribution? And I'm going to suggest, let me just put in a 30 here, maybe. We did a 10 before. And maybe this represents a typical cost or schedule distribution where there's a, a higher probability of being over the most likely than under the most likely. And in, in that situation, you can see the PERT has a lower value. And this may be why people prefer the PERT, because they're looking for something that's better to demonstrate. Or in fact, maybe the triangular is a better one to use because it compensates for some of their biases. Hope you found this of interest and valuable. Contact me if you'd like a copy of the model.
This is Brian Putt at brianattheputts.com. Thank you.